Team Ninja are really funny to me. I feel like they just release games and like barely advertise them. To be honest, Sony mostly advertised Rise of the Ronin because it's actually a PS5 exclusive, but I don't see many people talking about it. I mean, there's definitely a good chunk, especially Team Ninja fans playing it, but I actually think the game is pretty underrated right now. I uh, hopped into it, not expecting too much. I knew I was going to love the combat. I always love great combat systems and Team Ninja do not disappoint. Their last game, Wo Long, I've loved that combat system as well. But I was actually pleasantly surprised how much I just love this game as a whole. To be honest, just running around the open world in this game is really fun and visually pleasing, which is funny because people were calling it a PS3 game looking at, at screenshots and trailers. So today I wanted to review Rise of Ronin and give you guys all the details of what it offers, what type of players might enjoy this game, and how it actually became one of my favorite games that I've played so far in 2024. So the setting in Rise of the Ronin is absolutely awesome. So it's set at the end of the Edo period in the 19th century. You're going to be going to historic cities like Yokohama, Kyoto, Edo, and it is all beautiful to look at, especially going back in time like this. And you're basically watching a war between the shogunate and the anti-shogunate factions. And then you're going to create your two main characters. You're basically twins. And you are going to become a ronin, which basically means you are not part of either side. You're going to be making your own decisions throughout the game. And this might have been the biggest surprise for me. Team Ninja has not done anything like this, where you're making dialogue decisions that actually change the outcome of the story. And no joke, it will change the outcome of missions and the story. And the game also has a pretty in-depth bond system that I really enjoy. It's not too confusing confusing and certain things actually raise their bonds which i love like your teammates will ask you how do we want to infiltrate this area do you want to go balls to the wall straight through the front gates do you want to sneak around and assassinate people and whichever one you choose you know whatever friend you went with it's going to raise their bond and then you could get certain gifts to give them do side quests with them I loved the whole dynamic of just all the characters and the world building. It was actually pretty good for a Team Ninja game. The story in itself did not wow me. It's not going to be the craziest thing you've ever seen, but it's definitely fun to go through here and choose these dialogue options. You could actually be pretty cynical and evil at times as well. And then you can form deep relationships and literally end up with a wife at the end. I can't tell you how cool the vibe is of running around as a samurai in the 19th century, finding your love. It's just a vibe. So what are you going to be doing in Rise of the Ronin? So it has a lot of typical traits of an open world that most of the time I would criticize and I am going to criticize right here, but they do keep it really fun most of the time. And the reason for that is Team Ninja know how to get their basics down as in their movement and just overall the good feeling of moving your character around jumping gliding running jumping off your horse or just grabbing any item while doing anything is all extremely fast and just smooth in general so pretty much you're going to be zipping around the place getting your objectives done the game isn't going to slow you down at any points make you walk slowly or hold your character and take the control away no you're going to be doing everything at your own pace and it's a pretty damn fast pace so a huge thing in this game is your skill tree pretty much everything it gets you skill points in this game so that's going to be your focus everything around the open world is usually going to end up getting you skill points now it does get you new weapons loot all this other stuff but the main thing is skill points because that gets you very vital gameplay mechanics and we will get into all the gameplay don't worry but one thing i do want to mention that is pretty cool is as much as it is kind of Souls-like in its movement and step-by-step -step combat, because it is Team Ninja, you know, their own style of Souls combat in that way, it has difficulty options, and in general, I would actually compare this more to just your typical open-world action RPG. So fans that might want to play this type of game with this aesthetic but might be scared off by the difficulty, do not be. They have difficulty options and plenty of ways in this game to just breeze through it and enjoy the scenery and story. Now, I said skill points because you're going to be getting experience in this game, but it just levels up your player character. And while that's definitely cool, you're going to be also getting karma, which is your normal soul's currency. You know, the experience that if you die, you would normally lose. But in this game, you don't lose your karma. You pretty much get a vendetta on the enemy and you could go back and get a critical blow or kill them and get your karma right back. But every time you go to, in quotes, a bonfire and you sit down on it, it's going to convert that karma into skill points. 
months so as you can see it's very important but that's actually kind of a good thing because it makes the world feel connected everything you're doing has that one purpose to get you a bunch of skill points now i said that it does a bunch of other things around the world as well but mainly you're going to be getting that skill tree up which is always really fun now, the open world is definitely fun, but the actual activities themselves could bore some people, and honestly, they could have went a little harder, in my opinion. Most of the time, you know, you're raiding camps, you're locating shrines, you're finding your bonfires, which are basically your towers where it will reveal more activities within the areas. There's side quests and NPCs you're going to be meeting around. And best of all, you're going to be saving cats and helping out Shiba Inus. So yeah, the open world activities themselves aren't the greatest things in the world, but I had so much fun anyways, pretty much because you have a lot of player control. So you're really fast, you're moving around at your own pace, and everything leads you to a combat encounter. And there's a lot of depth with the combat system here, so I always had a great time wherever the open world took me. And it's kind of just nice breezing around looking at the sights. While the textures and the graphics aren't nearly as good as, let's say, Ghost of Tsushima, or even most PS5 exclusives, I think the art direction here team ninja did is really good and you will definitely have some spots where you just want to take some pictures at least personally i loved running around this world and the one good thing about everything in this game is it always wraps back around into combat doing a side quest where someone stole your money all oh, time to go just beat the living hell out of them oh someone's trying to steal our cat time to beat the living hell out of them pretty much everything in this game leads you to combat but that's okay because it's absolutely fantastic Team Ninja do not miss when it comes to combat systems, and Rise of the Ronin here might actually have one of, if not my favorite, Team Ninja combat systems so far. If you played previous Team Ninja games, it reminds me of a mixture of Wolong Fallen Dynasty and Neo. You have a variety of weapons to use from dual blades to your katana to a pole arm to great swords and then you have stances for each of these individual weapons which are pretty much going to change up all of your combos so there's a lot of creativity pretty much i'm just experimenting throughout this whole game over a hundred hours in this game and i have not even touched all the weapons or stances at all and then you have the special moves with those weapons where you hold down l1 and you're going to be doing your skills basically which have their own combos and special abilities within themselves so there's so much to tackle in this game so many variety of ways to play and it all feels so good like team ninja just nailed their sound design and the step-by-step -step dance of the combat you know the feeling of just taking on your enemy learning their movements and getting the edge on them again it's not as hard as a normal team ninja game i would say it's on the easier end if you do normal i have not tested out hard mode i'm going to be doing that on new game plus but you're definitely still going to be challenged but you could take on any of these camps any of these bosses any way you please and that is the fun of it they also have a few new things like the grapple in this game which just sends enemies flying or you could fly at them i love that you could use revolvers and even things like a flamethrower to just burn people down so there's a lot of cool ways to just mess with your enemy here even if they're setting a trap you could just go around them and set off their own trap on them so there's a lot of fun to be had here with the combat system probably the most most fun I've had with the Team Ninja combat system and I've played Ninja Gaiden, Strangers of Paradise, not all of Neo but a little bit of it, all of Wolong, so I have a lot of Team Ninja experience and I really did have an absolute blast with this combat system. I'm not going to say it's my absolute favorite yet but it's pretty much getting up there for Team Ninja combat systems. And then I played this game on PS5 and I was actually very happy with the performance mode. Now it's not perfect, it doesn't hold 60 frames all the time, especially if you're gliding through a big city, the frames are going to drop. But the visual quality is always pretty good and then most of the time it's smooth, so I was very happy with that. If not, you got your resolution mode or your ray tracing mode, so it was honestly just a pretty smooth experience throughout the whole game and I really appreciate that because nothing feels better to me when the character animations, the game's performance, and everything everything is just running really smooth because then everything in the game is just fun to do going back to how the game went to an open world one other minor criticism i had besides the open world activities being a little bit mundane is the bosses team ninja are always known for their boss fights and while there's definitely a few notable ones in this game
game since they took this open world approach they don't have as many like main big story bosses that you're gonna fight and that was definitely a bit disappointing because i was waiting for some crazier bosses but the pretty much normal combat encounters and bosses you're gonna be fighting through the game they definitely provide enough fun but i definitely wanted a few more hard hitters there is a dojo though where you could fight all of your teammates or previous bosses or characters that you've met and it gets really challenging here especially if you're trying to get like the highest level on it these were a lot of fun also the team ninja and square enix have like a meeting before they released rebirth and rise of the ronin because team ninja does not do mini games and they actually have a decent amount of mini games on the open world like archery riding your horses gambling all these sorts of things and rebirth is like known for all the mini games it just threw out at us so i thought that was kind of funny i was like team ninja and mini games what the hell but yeah if you just want to be an awesome samurai or ninja in the 19th century japan and basically make a whole bunch of decisions good or evil and actually change the outcome i really recommend rise of the ronin i really didn't have much to complain about through my almost 100 hour playthrough now i'm over 100 hours because i'm still playing it but yeah i really had fun with this game and i actually do recommend it so if you were thinking about buying it or hesitant i could totally recommend it so let me know guys have you been playing rise of the ronin are you interested in it i want to hear all your thoughts on it it's been one of my favorite games of this year so far so i hope you guys enjoyed my rise of the ronin review hopefully you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you guys in the next video peace